Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Welcome and thank you for joining me for yet another bonus episode of The Hopefulist. Today, we are talking to Haley Thomas. She's a business strategist who helps women start and scale businesses that align with the life they desire to create. Welcome, Haley. Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. It's an honor to be here with you. Now, Haley was my coach. Ra ra shish boom ba. <laughs> Um, and, uh, she's fabulous and I love her to death and we are uh, here today to talk a little bit about, I don't know, with feeling stuck, I think is a, is a good topic, um, to, to talk about where we're just not happy with where we are. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you were and how you went into starting your own business? Yeah, I would say, you know, I think oftentimes we think the journey is linear and it's definitely not the case. I started um, my my entrepreneurship journey started actually when I was in college and I had decided to major in something that, you know, I knew would get me a stable job. I'd climb up the corporate ladder. It felt very safe, but it wasn't the thing that brought me joy. And at the time, I didn't know that entrepreneurship was even an option for me. And so while I was in school, I found myself feeling very miserable, very stuck, very anxious, wondering like, is this really it? Is this what life's all about? I just have to follow this path that was kind of put in place for me. And I was introduced to network marketing while I was in school. And that was really an eye-opening experience to see that entrepreneurship could be a possibility for me. And so I was with a company for several years after school. And through that, I realized that I freaking love being able to schedule my life in the way that I wanted to and really help other people do the same. And so I decided to even step out of the box of just being in the network marketing space and started my own company um, where my passion lies is really helping others to connect with what lights them up the most. And that's coming from a place of being being stuck in something that didn't bring me joy, that wasn't my passion and not wanting to experience that and wanting to help other people out of that same experience as well. And so I started um, just doing some side things here and there for some local businesses. I did email marketing behind the scenes for a wine bar. I did social media for a gym. I was diving in and learning everything that I possibly could around business and personal development, everything that, that I would need to know to start a business of my own and to help other people do the same. And so that leads me to two years ago, it kind of hit like a bolt of lightning. I like to say it was really out of the blue and and it, it struck me this title and it was called the passion pursuit. And what I recognized is what I wanted and craved more than anything was to create a safe container, whether that be through coaching, business consulting, retreats for other women to really go from point A to point B when it comes to making their dream a reality. And so I started putting some stuff up there, out there and continued to learn from there. And by 2021, um, last year, actually, January of 2021, I said, by the end of the year, I'm going to go full time. And one thing led to another and I ended up going full time in my own business in mid-February. And it's been a ride and a very exciting one, to say the least. That is exciting. Well, congratulations to you. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, I've talked about before the fixed versus growth mindset, but you have a possibility mindset. Yes. So I am someone, and I was just talking to a mentor of mine yesterday about this. I am someone who's naturally a planner. And what I mean by that is, is if you've ever taken the strength finders test, one of my top five is futuristic. I'm very much a dreamer. I always have been, but a lot of the times I'm so stuck and in that fixed mindset of how it needs to be. And what I've now learned is there's this possibility mindset where it's a, it's a place for me to continue to dream big, to have that greater vision and to detach from the outcome of how I get there. 
And so it's this, this bigger picture, this bigger vision, um, something where I am able to stay in that dream, but I'm allowing it to evolve over time in a more organic way. Because what I found through my own experience is a lot of the times, the things that teach me the most in life or the experiences that I'm so grateful for were things that I never saw even possible for myself at the time. And so it's helped me to kind of see more opportunity around myself, um, to make those deeper connections with people and to really just dream bigger than ever before. What you're talking about reminds me a little bit of the movie. Do you remember, did you ever see Under the Tuscan Sun? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, in this movie, she buys this house in Tuscany and um, she says to somebody, you know, when she first buys it, she wants to find love and to have the house filled with the laughter of children. And then at the end of the movie, she's hosting a wedding and there's all these children running around. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, that's not what she meant. That's not what she meant. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that's what it reminded me of when you said, you know, we all are attached to the way we think it should be going in order to get to a certain outcome. And rarely does it ever follow the path we think that it will. No. I mean, if you would have asked me even five years ago, if I would be doing what I'm doing now, I would have been like, how? How? Because my, I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. I still had growing to do. And I think that's, you know, when I know you're super passionate about personal development as well and the work and the mindset, because the more that I work inner, do the inner work, the more possibilities I'm able to walk into because that, that development, that tapping into here has allowed me to continue to grow and move forward. And so, you know, I just, I think about that, that box that I was in, if I would have stayed here, it's like, this is the only thing I can do. This is the only way, you know, I would have been working a job and stuck in my nine to five hating every day because I wouldn't have given myself the opportunity to see that there was other possibilities out there for me. So if somebody is stuck in a job right now that they like, that, that they hate, and they can't even fathom something like this, something like starting to work for themselves or to build a business, uh, do you have anything, any tips as to where he even gets started? Yeah, yeah. I would say, I mean, the first thing that I would really ask yourself is what brings you joy? And I know that sounds super, super basic and very simple. And it's like, okay, Haley, that's great. Like these things excite me, but like, how am I supposed to live my life around that? And it's really, it's coming back to the the crossover of what brings you joy and what are you really good at? What are those superpowers? What are those things that people are like, oh, you know, Susie Q, you're such a great listener, or you really know how to pull out the best in people, or gosh, you're just, you have a way of figuring things out when it's a complicated equation. Like, what are those superpowers that you know about yourself or that other people tell you? And then it's starting to imagine what can you do with that to make an impact in the lives of other people. And I actually, I'll I'll send this to you, Wendy, as well. I do have a workbook that goes through this. So it's a little bit of a journaling prompt to really write out these answers. But I often find that your purpose is in the middle of that, of what brings you joy, how you can make an impact, and what skills you have within you. And I think a lot of the times we're looking externally, but we're not doing the work to look internally into what who we are and to what really lights us up. So that's where I would start is actually turning that vision inward. You know, I wanted to focus a little bit, you know, hopefully you can help me convince listeners that they do need to do the work. Absolutely. And that really nothing will change until they do. And the longer that I've been doing this and the more involved that I get, the more work I do, it's never getting shorter. It's like going to the gym your workout doesn't get easier. It progressively gets stronger and harder. Um, you know, I'm, I'm up to journaling. I'm, I'm journaling every day now along with my gratitude journal and, you know, reading uh, personal development books and um, courses and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not slowing down. It's just speeding up. So, you know, how it's hard to motivate people to take those first steps. Mm-hmm. 
I think it is, you know, I had a mentor of mine and she asked this question and it's, it's stuck with me for years. And she said, how can I take, or how can you take 10 more, 10% more responsibility in your life? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that's kind of a gut punch, right? I'm sure if those listening, they're probably like, ah, yep, that's it. And that's with anything. That's with health. That's with your relationships. That's with your mindset. That's with your business or your dreams. That's with anything is how can you take 10% more responsibility? It's not to say it's easy. I'm not here to preach entrepreneurship and starting something of your own, pursuing your dreams. Like that sounds all fluffy and woo woo, but I can tell you right now, it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. I know you know that as well. And, and, but the thing is, how bad do you want it? And staying connected to that vision is, is truly the, the thing that pushes you on those days where you just don't want to. I will even tell you, I like last week I was having one of those days where I'm like, gosh, I just want to, I want to be lazy. I just want to day, Haley. I go weeks doing right. that. <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's bounced back quicker every time. It's that's growth right there. Um, but no, it's it's one of those things where you wake up and you're like, I just don't really feel motivated. But a lot of the times I don't feel motivated, but I'm disciplined because the vision is greater. The vision is what pulls me to keep going. And it doesn't mean that every day is fire and I'm hustling every single day. Like it's definitely ebbs and flows. That's life. However, on those days where I'm a little bit in a down, I check in and say, what do I need? How can I fill my cup up? Cause a lot of the times it, it really comes back to, I've, I've been hustling a little too much. I take care of myself and then I keep moving forward. I don't let it stop me. And so I think about that, that bounce back ability has been a muscle that I have worked through so many years to strengthen, to be able to get up when, when things are not, are not going my way or not easy. So one of the things that you said was you started to just do little side hustles here and there while you were still working. Um, what is it that, you know, and, and I think that's really key is to help discover what else might be out there for you. So you know, what was that first idea that led you to that first little side gig that turned into the second side gig and the third, and now it's, you know, your whole life? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's the discovery. And a lot of people are so tied to such a specific thing that again, they don't give themselves the opportunity to learn through the process and the journey to see what actually could be for them. And so for me at the time, I really found that I, I just started to look at businesses, um, whether it be a small business or corporate business. I was in a corporate job at the time and I started to see what is missing here. Like, where is the gap? How can we make this better? And really that's what business is. It's how, how can you fill a need? That's really what it comes down to is how can you fill a need, right? Like a bakery, a local bakery is filling the need of giving sweet treats and happiness to the people locally, you know, and making me fat, right? Yes. (laughs) And caffeine, right? Like the coffee shops are helping you to stay caffeinated in the morning and to get going with your day. And so every single business has a purpose. And so for me, I was looking at something and I'm like, how can I make this better? And then I wasn't afraid to put myself out there to be of service. And I will tell you in the beginning, I started for very little income. I started for even free with a couple of clients that I first worked with because I just wanted to one, get the opportunity to see if I even liked this type of work. But two, I wanted to see, is this something for me? Can I really make something out of this? Can I really help people here? And so I, um, even with the wine bar, you know, with my husband and I, we went out for a date and they just opened recently. They are super small business locally and they started hosting events. Well, I have had experience in past things through college and even high school where I had planned events. So I looked at this and I was like, Hey, do you guys have anyone, you know, helping you with marketing or anything in terms of the planning side of things? And they're like, no, actually we don't. And that's what I think people don't realize is people need what you have to offer, but they don't know where to look. And if you're too afraid to put yourself out there, you're never going to have that connection to be able to actually help somebody. And so that's what it really comes down to is 
not being afraid to share your services, to share the things you want to do, to put yourself out there to help people and to really have no expectations, but more so be in the mindset of how can I be of service to somebody else? And that's really key. You know, we often, and maybe it was just me. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't grow up or, or, you know, go through my career thinking about how I was going to serve other people. You know, I just kind of did a job and I was like, okay, well, this is my job. This is what's expected of me. But once you really kind of shift into that being of service, it really is like a whole other level. It, it, it drives you more. Um, it's more passion around it. And if there is something that you can offer that you think you can offer that will help people, I think that's really the number one key right there. Absolutely. And I, I mean, my whole mission is to help people recognize that the dream that you have within you is there for a purpose. Like that may sound really woo woo and out there, but I truly believe that if you have something on your heart, it is there for a purpose and somebody is wishing, is praying for you and what you are needing to offer this world. They're waiting for you to step out of your comfort zone, to put yourself out there and to share your gift. And that's what it comes down to is, is really, you know, recognizing that there's someone out there who needs you and you're doing a disservice by not sharing your gifts and your mission with the world. I think so many people think that what they, they don't consider what they have gifts. Unfortunately, I think that we need to get into a mindset or even just, you know, exploring how you can be of service. Exactly. And I think that just comes through experience too. And, and trying new things and not being afraid, you know, if something, if you were to put yourself out there and you are recognized at the end of it, that you're like, you know what, I don't think this is for me. What did you lose? Nothing, but you gained knowledge. You gained wisdom. You probably even made some new relationships. Like there was an experience there that taught you something, but what did you lose? nothing. And I think a lot of times people don't even start because they're afraid of failure, but really what is failure, right? Failure is just an opportunity to grow. Failure is an opportunity to see if something is even meant for you. And so I think that, um, when it comes to, to just getting started, it's just a matter of releasing the expectations and simply just seeing it, like just having fun with it, just putting yourself in the discovery mode and the adventure, knowing that everything is going to come back to you, whether it be a result, whether it be the next step or whether it be a lesson, you will always gain from an experience. And living your life with curiosity, I also think is key. Um, you are big into yoga and you just had a epiphany uh, recently that you wanted to become certified. Yes. <laughs> so tell me uh, about that. Yes. I, I am naturally a very curious person and I tend to let my uh, curiosity and my passion lead me in life, which has been fun <laughs> and, and also keeps my husband on his toes. Yeah. I, we were out having a picnic. It was Labor Day weekend and it was Monday. We had this blanket out and I had just done yoga at a retreat the previous week and I hadn't done yoga in years, but it's a practice that I absolutely used to love and that just really fueled my mind, body, and soul. And so after doing this that week while we were sitting there having this picnic I was like gosh I would love to get back into yoga again and then of course my next thought is man other people need this too <laughs> and then my thought is well, why don't I be the person to do it and so then I looked up some local studios um, that were around me to see if they had a teacher training and crazy this is like this is when you know it's aligned the studio that I used to go to when we first moved here to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was starting their teacher training that Saturday. Wow. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy timing. Let me just reach out. I haven't made a decision yet. Let me just reach out to see if this is something that would work for me. You know, I was about to walk into the busiest season of my life. And I think that's an excuse a lot of people use as well Is there's never really a good time time to do something new. And so I reached out via email and I said, Hey, I'm wondering, you know, when this starts, how much is it? Um, what studio it's at? Cause they had a few, they had one spot left and it was the studio that was down the street from me. The wow. Company. 
So I said, you know what? There's just something in my gut that is telling me that I need to do this. And so I said, yes. And I jumped all in and I started that Saturday. I mean, I had to buy textbooks. I was basically going back to school and doing yoga school every other weekend in what would be one of the craziest entrepreneurship seasons of my life. And I said yes to this because I just knew that there was something here for me. And what's really crazy, Wendy, is that Thursday before we started, my husband and I were actually in a car accident. Um, We were hit and it totaled his car completely. Luckily, both of us walked away. We were, um, I had bruises, but other than that, we were really not too injured, more so just mentally shaken up. And I will tell you, that Saturday at school, going to yoga and having that practice and being in that environment was healing for me in so many ways. And it was after that first weekend where I knew in my gut, if that was the only reason that I was here was because of the timing of everything. And because I needed something to just calm my mind and heal my body in a practice that I was familiar with. That was the only thing I got out of this. That was a success for me. And it ended up being so much more. Now I teach once a week and I absolutely love this practice and and I love sharing it with other people, but it was really wild, the timing of everything. Well, and that's what I, the the point I think is, yeah, when when you're curious about stuff and you're willing to try new things, it can even lead to other sources of income for you. Not that, you know, you're going to be a full-time yoga instructor, but you could, you could, if you want. Or you can do it on the side like you are, you know, me someday, you know, I'm a big pickleballer. Someday, maybe I will be a coach. I guess. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I'm getting pretty good. <laughs> I love it. And that's the thing. It's like life's too short. If something brings you joy, I'm not saying you have to monetize every hobby that you have. Right. I think they're just meant to be fun. But if there is something that you're like, hi, hey, you know, I'm really good at this. And this is something that I would love to share with somebody why not? Life is too short. Yeah. Like, you know, writing or, you know, starting that blog or maybe trying to tackle a book, or if you're good at drawing or, you know, these are things that people always downplay or, oh, well, everybody writes and, you know, everybody wants to write a book and, you know, everybody has a blog now and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's scary to put yourself out there, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're never going to gain anything if you don't give it a go. I always use this analogy. You know, we all have, I feel like a favorite pizza place. Like when you're really craving a certain type of pizza, everybody has their spot that they love to order from. And I found this crazy fact. I want to say it was in New York City where pizza is very lively and very happening. Yes. And I want to say it was either 7,000 or 13,000 pizza places in New York City alone. Oh, yeah. Not surprising. Not surprising at all. And they all stay open because everybody has their own flavor, their own specialty that they love. And so that's the same thing with you, whether it's your dream of writing a book or starting a blog or putting yourself out there, starting a podcast of your own. It's like, there's so many people out there who may be doing something similar, but there's only one you and somebody needs that. And so the way that you approach it and talk about it is something that could relate exactly to some people that will find you along the way. Exactly. And I think that's the thing is sometimes you, when, you know, I, I was listening to a podcast this morning, it was centered around mental health and mindset. I've listened to tons of podcasts about this exact topic. And yet today that was so fueling for me from that exact person who was sharing that work. And so sometimes it's really about the timing of it too. And when you put yourself out there, when you have a gift that you're sharing, you may hit somebody at the time that they need it the most. Even the um, John, I think his name is John Baptiste. He just won the album of the year with the Grammys two weeks ago. And he came on there and he said, you know, at the end of the day, all of the artists that are other nominees, music is subjective. Mm 
It just hits you at the right point in time where it will change. A song can change your life. And I think that's the same thing when it comes to the things you're passionate about or the businesses you want to start. It's like sometimes it's really about the timing. And by you putting yourself out there, you may reach somebody who, again, has just been wishing for you in that exact season of their life. And so that's why it's like, don't, don't hesitate on the things that bring you joy. Don't wait. Trust yourself to know that what you have within you is truly a gift that needs to be shared. I don't know if we ever talked about this before, but it was indeed a song that inspired my whole brand and business. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. I was driving to work one day and I heard the song, A Million Dreams by Pink from The Greatest Showman. And it just, it just hit me. In that way where I was like, you know, you know, I was happy with my job, but I was like, but I feel like there's, there's more, I feel like there's something more I could do. It was just listening to those words. And then I went home that day and I bought it on, you know, iTunes and I listened to it 50 times that day. Um, And then ironically, I started writing a blog just really about stuff. And two weeks later is when I lost my job. And that's when I was like, you know what? Because like this all hit me like a lightning bolt. I never, ever had any intention of going out on my own, of doing anything like this, even close to this. But a song inspired the blog. Losing my job inspired the podcast. And, you know, here I am trudging along. (laughs) I love that. And I think that just goes to show, too, is that that next step led you to the next step, led you to the next step. And so sometimes it's not necessarily trusting that whatever you're wanting to do is going to be this big, massive thing and this huge vision. I'm, I'm, and I'm here speaking from this as a dreamer myself. I always have the big vision, but I think the trust comes in building that inner trust just to take the first step and trusting the next step. And then the next one and not knowing that it has to work out perfectly or that you have to know where it's going to go. But just trusting that sometimes things just lead to another. I as well started not in a blog, but I started with a Facebook page. I created the Passion Pursuit like two and a half years ago, way before I even went full time. And it was just a place for me to share inspiration and wisdom and like little nuggets that I got from other podcasts or personal development books or something that came within me that I'm like, somebody needs to hear this. And I just used it as a platform to share. And also people are doing that naturally and they don't even realize it through social media. And so it's that same thing. It's like, what are you naturally good at? Like, what are you sharing on social media? Is it something around the house and how you organize a space? Is it a new recipe that you're like, oh, I just want to share this with the world. Is it something on how you parent your kids? kids like what are those things you're naturally doing that could actually be leading you towards your calling towards the thing you're supposed to share and there's so much um virtually now there's so much that happens that's happening on uh, online and such and even through social media there really the possibilities are endless i was i was chatting with actually a friend of mine and was trying to figure out something you know for her to do uh, she's not really working right now. And, you know, I said, well, well, what is it that you like to do? She goes, I don't like to do anything but watch TV. I'm like, all right, well, then do Instagram lives on your show, your favorite show every week, you know, and and have people chime in and 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 talk about that show. I'm like, there's just so much. You're not necessarily going to make money at that. Maybe eventually you can become an influencer. But yeah, I mean, there's just so many possibilities and it really can relate back to something that you you love, even though it's something that you don't think you should love. You know how many podcasts there are out there that are about TV shows? True crime and yeah. Yes, like all of these things are. So yes, even if you're loving to watch TV, like you could totally dive into that. And it's like, okay, well, why do you love that? Is it a storyline? Is it the unknown? Is it a certain category? There is a niche for everybody. Let me tell you truly, like when you see the Facebook groups out there, it'll be like, I think Facebook actually did a commercial on this where they showed that there is truly a group for everyone. It was, right. it was like hamster owners that, you know, how to exercise your hamster or something like there's a niche for everybody. <laughs> and so it's just trusting in that and seeing it as a possibility. Well, and I think that that's really the key in thinking about something different for your life when you're feeling stuck is, is, you know, basically what I said to her is, you know, what do you like? Even if you think it's something that's not productive or something that you shouldn't be doing all the time, what can you do that's related to that? You know, maybe 
you love bike riding or, you know, kayaking or what have you, you know, there's still, there's just possibilities that you can come up with. And again, you go online, you search for groups and stuff, and, you know, maybe you get together with a whole bunch of people on the weekends to go kayaking, and then you meet somebody that has an amazing job offer for you. I mean, it, it's really just things do lead into each other. Absolutely. And I think, too, we complicate it a lot. We complicate it a lot. We make it seem like it has to be a hard or this big thing. And I even think about influencers, for example, who are trying on clothes and sharing fashion brands. And if you actually think about the task, they're putting on their clothes. <laughs> Right, and sharing it with the world. It's very simple, right? And so it's it's the same kind of idea. It's like, are we overcomplicating it? And that's the thing too, when it comes to starting a business or pursuing your passion, it's it's really asking yourself, am I making this harder than it needs to be? So we often do that and that slows us down. Perfectionism, procrastination, it's really comes down to, do you trust that? Like, do you trust yourself? It's coming back to building that trust and making sure it aligns because a lot of the times we will stop ourselves before we start just because we are overcomplicating it and getting in our own way. And, you know, what's really great about this generation coming up now is, you know, they, they really have been raised on social media and you can turn anything into really anything you want on social media. A couple of years back, I was was the day after Christmas. I'm sitting with my my little niece who's about 14, 15 years old, and she's got YouTube on the television and she's just watching video after video of people opening their presents. Just opening their presents, showing it, I got this and I got this. And yet I couldn't I couldn't look away. I'm like, why do I care what you got? And then I'm like, but oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. Oh, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. There's so much, there's so much possibility through social media. And there's so many ways. I mean, even we got connected on social. And I just, I think about that all the time. It's like, how, how do I connect with a lot of the people that I work with now? Most of them are through social media. It's incredible. And that came from simply putting myself out there, sharing things on Instagram, on Facebook, through Facebook groups, and just not being afraid to support people where they need it or to celebrate people when they have wins and be there when there's hard things. It's, it's just, it's a connection piece, but it's intentional and it's coming from a place of service. Great. So tell me a little bit more about this workbook. Yes. So I will um, give it to you. It is called a passion to profit. It's very simple. As we talked about making things simple, it's very simple. So you may look at it and be like, oh my gosh, that seems so silly. I know what brings me joy. I am challenging you to write it down. Because when you know, Haley, it, that's too hard. It's too hard. I, I don't want to write it down. <laughs> no, I, I have one task today. Answer these questions. It's going to walk you through the things that bring you joy that light you up. It's even going to ask you, what did you do as a kid? That that excited you that brought you joy. It's taking you back to that inner child. The other question is talking about the skills, the superpowers that you have within you. And I would encourage you to ask three people that you are closest to what they see in you as your greatest superpower, because oftentimes we're too close to even recognize that it is indeed a superpower. And then finally, it's going to ask you the impact that you want to make. And you'll see, you'll see it come together in the workbook, why this matters and why I put it together in this way, but it's for you to have that visual. And how can everybody find this? I will do, I can send it to you. Otherwise I will have it linked in my Instagram as well. Okay. That would be cool. So tell us your Instagram handle, all the places that we can find you. Yeah. So I have a Facebook page. I think it's just facebook.com slash the passion pursuit. And then on Instagram, it is my full name. It is Haley, H-A-L-E-Y dot Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E dot Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. And I did just download TikTok as well. I might be over there soon. No way! I did. I'm like, I guess I should probably start. There's a lot of opportunity here. I'm learning it. I haven't posted anything yet, but I will be over there soon. It just Well, make sure you follow me, girl. I'm at the hopefulest. Oh, you know I will. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. What about a website? Did you mention your website? 
website right now is under construction. I oh, do no. Link. I know. I have a link through my Instagram, though, um, that connects to a couple freebies as well as ways to work together. So if you are someone who is starting a business, I'd love to support you there. All right, Haley, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's good to see your face again. I know. It's been so long. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining me for this bonus episode. Uh, Now, go on out there and be badass this week. You know I'm here cheering you on.